Hello, I'm Allison from Cronachiska Heritage Center, and today I'm coming to you from the archives here at Cronachiska. You may have heard about the archives. We house um, local and South Georgia history here, whether it's documents, photographs, newspapers, all those, those sorts of things. Um, we, the film, um, local open records, all those sorts of things we house here at the archives. We have a research center here, which would normally be open to the public. Um, right now it is not, but when, when we are able to open back up safely to the public, um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about how you handle old books. If you wanted to come here to the research center and say we have a book here that has information in it that may be relevant to something you're looking for, when we bring the book out to you to look through what you're supposed to do when you handle it, the very first thing, which we've all gotten very good practice at, is washing your hands. Um, I know you may see a lot of times people wearing gloves when they handle old things, particularly things in museums, but with books and paper objects, gloves can actually make you cause more damage to the material because you can't feel what you're doing and paper and book bindings can be a lot more sensitive to that than something like glass or metal would be. So with paper, clean, dry hands would be your best thing. So I just washed my hands freshly and when you handle a book, you want to make sure that you support it evenly from all sides. So if you're carrying it, and this is a 1949 city directory, so it's not too, too old. Definitely not one of the oldest things we have here, but when you're carrying a book or a paper, you want to make sure that you're supporting it evenly on all sides. If it's too big or too heavy for you to carry yourself, get help. If you try and struggle with it, you're just gonna hurt it and hurt yourself. So you wanna make sure that all sides of it are evenly supported. You don't want to um, push one cover further over to the side than the other. Say like if it had been up at an angle, that's a terrible way for a book to rest long term because it's going to bend and warp the spine over time. So flat, straight up and down is best if you're going to um, store it long term. When you go to read your book, if it's one that's really, really thick or really um, brittle, you would want to use a book, uh, um, excuse me, a book pillow or um, wedges to help support the front and back cover. This one is not all that impressive, so um, it'll be fine sitting flat on the table, but if the spine needs a little bit more support, you would want to have something to prop up one or the other sides of the cover to help just give it a little bit more support when you handle it. And then when you go to read it, you want to not just open it straight to the middle. That's not, it's not very safe to do. You wanna take it a little bit at a time. And my trimmer is really acting up today, so y'all forgive me. So when you go to turn the pages, you want to get them from both corners. Don't ever lick your finger, that's nasty. <laughs> And it's not good for the book too, so don't ever lick your finger. If you need help separating the pages, get um, a little piece of card stock, like an index card or maybe even a post-it note just to help slip in between the pages of the book and help separate them out. And you support both corners at the same time as you turn the pages. And good grief, my hands are shaking today. But you would turn the pages like so. Again, you don't want to just dive right into the middle of the book because you could risk the more weight that you put on the pages at one time, the more risk you have of breaking the pages, especially if they're especially brittle. So don't just dive right into the middle of it. You want to take it just one or two pages at a time as you turn. So you support both corners of the pages and turn them evenly over like that. So that is how you turn the pages in the book. And when you're researching, when you're handling, you don't ever lean on it, don't rest on it, certainly don't write on it. If you're taking notes, you want to put your paper and pencil off to the side. You want to stay away from using mechanical pencils because that 
lead has a tendency to break off and little, little bits of lead go flying. Sometimes they can land in the book. That's not good because then it gets scratched around and then you've got pencil lines all over your book. So that's not good. You also want to avoid using pens around the books too just because ink is a lot more permanent. So if you get ink in the book, that's a lot harder to get out than pencil lead is. So stick with just regular old number two pencil. Use it off to the side. Um, hand scanners, digitizer, th things like that can be okay. You just have to be careful about how brittle the page of the book is. If it's especially crispy, um, you want to avoid using those because some of them take a lot of pressure. You really have to push down to get a good image of the page. If it's a really crunchy book, you don't want to use those. You don't want to hurt the thing you're trying to preserve. So um, just be smart about it. Sometimes just a camera would be best if you're trying to get a copy of the image there. So um, when, you're, when you're handling it, when you're trying to reference information, hand notes oftentimes are the best thing. But if you have to get an actual copy of what's in the book, sometimes a camera is the best source. Um, and regarding light and flash, things like that, sometimes just one or two camera flashes is, is better than anything else. So if that's your only course of action, that may be what you have to go with. But by all means, when you're storing your book, you want to make sure that it is in a place that is dark because light pollution is cumulative. That means it builds up over time and it's irreversible. We cannot undo light pollution. So the more something gets faded by the light, it's just going to be that way. We can't, can't undo that. Um, so you want to keep it someplace that's dark and someplace where it's not going to change temperature very much. Books like to be cold. So if you have a place that stays really, really cool most of the year, um, like maybe in the back of a closet, um, that, that would be good. So you want to try and keep them cool and dark. That's why our archives here is so very, very cold. And when nobody is working back in the storage area, the lights are off because we want to try and keep things cool and dark year round. So I think that's the basics of it. You want to keep it supported. You don't want to rest on it. Use clean, hand, clean hands. Um, take notes off to the side. Don't put damaging scanners or anything like that. Keep it cool and dark. If you have any questions or comments about um, handling archival materials or what we do here at the archives, please feel free to leave those in the comments section of this video and we will definitely get back to you. My name is Allison. I'm in the archives here at Florida Tuska Heritage Center and thank you so much for your time.